you know, you lay back. Everyone kind of just taking it as easy as possible. So oh, uh, I'm enjoying nice. it so far. What about yourself? Same. I'm up. Kids, my last son's off to school. The other three are in Lovely. college, so it's nice and oh, quiet. Great. <laughs> That's exactly what you want. Will you uh, do a little bit of writing now after this or just take it handy? Yes. Monday is usually my clean the house, get the laundry done, and usually I edit my podcast. So cool. not necessarily a lot of writing on Monday. And I yeah. just finished a novel on Saturday. So it's like, Brilliant. Oh, yeah, I'm just relax now after that. <laughs> <laughs> Draft. So who knows uh, exactly. what, what kind of mess I'll go back to. <laughs> I know the feeling I do. <laughs> That's oh, great. Fair play. Well, okay. So you're seven hours ahead, right? So you're so close yeah, to no. Afternoon. I, it's uh, actually two o'clock over here, so I actually got it wrong. We were six hours when I sent the email, but uh, I completely forgot daylight savings time kicked in on Saturday, so now it's five hours, so it's two o'clock over here. And <laughs> yeah. we don't even have daylight savings until Halloween, and I'm like, what is this? Why can't we all be on the same schedule? <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Oh, <laughs> the joys of it. I know. So is my sound okay? It, does it... Oh, yeah, I can hear okay. you perfectly, yeah. Very clear. Okay. I haven't practiced with my headset on, so. <laughs> okay, this will be the test run then, right? <laughs> exactly. Usually I have my big microphone, but hopefully it's, it'll be good. I did test uh, recording on Zoom and looking cool. at what the file comes out, so it right. should be good. I'm really excited to have you. Yeah, today. it should be fun, yeah. This is brilliant. I've never, I've never actually done a podcast before, so um, yeah. I've done like a lot of live talks before the lockdown, and I've done a couple of live streams since then, but this is the first podcast, so I'm really excited about that. Oh, me too. So how much time do you have? Let me ask that beforehand and make sure I don't keep you too long if you have. As, as long as, as you'd like. Um, okay. It's absolutely fine. Like the kids are off school anyway, so uh, because of the, the Halloween break, so we don't really have to do much today anyway, you know, so yeah, as long or as little as you'd like. Entirely up to you. Okay, awesome. Well, we'll I'll just uh, do my little intro thing and we'll just jump yep. right in and we'll see absolutely. what happens. Bring it on. <laughs> okay. Well, welcome back to the Loosely <clears throat> And I'll stop a lot because I'm like, oh, wait. <laughs> no problem. Take your time. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the Loose Leaf Author Podcast. Hillary and Kale couldn't be here with me today, but I'm really excited to have Damien with us. And uh, we're going to get to know him a little bit better today and his debut novel, Big Red. Damien, want to introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Damien Larkin. Um, first off, thank you very much for having me on the show. Like, I'm really excited about this. Uh, I'm, I'm an Irish author. Uh, I live in Dublin. Uh, I came out with my first uh, book, Big Red, um, was published by Dancing Lemur Press, which is a uh, North Carolina-based publishing company. Um, that came out uh, just over a year ago. Um, it was actually nominated for the, um, the Best Novel of the Year by the uh, BSFA, which uh, I managed to get onto the long list uh, for that, which is a big achievement for someone starting off. Um, I'm also... Yeah, no, it was mind blowing, you know, and um, you think first novel, oh, it's probably going to be hit or miss, but even just getting on a, on a long list with the likes of Margaret Atwood, seeing my name just a couple of spaces down from her was just like, whoa. <laughs> I know, I'm sure, so, yeah. oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, it's, uh, I'm relatively new to the, the whole writing side of things. Uh, I've only been writing about two and a half years, uh, oh all in all, so it's, it's been a bit of a roller coaster, but it's a fantastic experience. Uh, I'm really, really loving it. Um, made so many great friends within the writing community over here in Ireland and across the UK. Uh, and like that, I'm just, you know, I'm really excited to be here. So thank you very much. <laughs> well, now I'm even more excited. I have lots of questions for you. But uh, just from that, you've only been writing, you said about two and a half years. I mean, I think I wrote on my first novel 10 years before I well, even got serious <laughs> well and, done, and completed it. Oh my gosh, it was, it was a nightmare. So I'm excited. You're on the fast track. <laughs> That's I, I'd like to think so, you know. Um, it really was like it's one of those things. I think looking back at it, I'd always wanted to to write a novel, but like so many people out there, there was always an excuse, you know. It's always like, oh, I've got my two kids, and you know they're in school, and I can't really do this, or you know I have to go off and I have to do this, that, the other. But like it's always finding that excuse. Uh, and about two and a half years ago, um, I just basically said enough is enough. Um, I had it in my head. I wanted to to go ahead and become a writer, and like anything I do, if if I have something in my mind. I'm just all about 100% just throw myself into, into it, you know? So uh, probably one of the best decisions I've made. Oh, that's <laughs> so I'm very happy about it. <laughs> well, tell me, how did a guy from Dublin 
get in with a North Carolina publisher. I actually used to live in North Carolina, so Lovely. love the place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've heard great things about it. Uh, it's one of it's on my list. I've never actually been to America, but there's a few places I'd like to check out. Um, but yeah, definitely North Carolina. Um, but how, how I got my, my publishing deal, it's very, very random. It's something that uh, over here in Ireland, uh, whenever we have a convention on, people actually bring me on to talk about it. Um, and it's, to be honest, it's uh, through a thing called a Twitter pitch. Um, so Twitter pitch events, they, they take place multiple times uh, across the, the year. Um, they can vary like uh, in terms of genre or, and so forth. Like there's some of the bigger ones like um, like uh, Pit Mad and Pit Wars uh, are one of the big ones. But uh, I'd only randomly came across it on Twitter. And I was like, what is a, a Twitter pitch event? I had no clue. But I saw people like on my kind of timeline just tweeting kind of things to do with their, their manuscripts. I was like, okay, I'll look into this. But I ended up submitting for a few, uh, a few of them and got absolutely nowhere. Then another one came out I think it was in January or it could have been February um, but it was by a group uh, called the Insecure Writer Support Group um, which are a fantastic community of people and um, I got involved in that ended up getting three likes off three different publishers so for someone who's kind of like Excellent. way down I was like oh my god wow this is so cool <laughs> and it turns out one of them was a vanity press so you know yourself I did a bit of due diligence and kind of like pushed them aside but two legitimate publishers um, I submit to both of them uh, and in the end I decided to go with Dance and Lemur Press uh, just because of how kind of fantastic they are. Um, El Diane Wolf, she's the, the main publisher there and I think it was just how kind of transparent she was. She was very kind of straightforward and um, kind of explaining what her role was um, and there was absolutely no pressure. Like she sent me over the contract after a bit of kind of, after she checked it out and uh, she just said, look, take a few days, think about it, come back to us then, you know. Um, and I just, I, I researched it because it was one of those things I wasn't too sure if it was like too good to be true and you know, you're always right. looking for some sort of a catch but like I mean, They've been absolutely fantastic, and I haven't looked back since. I know I've talked to Alex a lot about it. Alex Kavanaugh. Oh, yeah, he's yeah. Kind of our, our link, he put us in touch. Yeah. And, oh, he's just excellent. I know he's with Dan really Lemur, and every time I've talked to him about it, he's he has nothing but good things to say. So Yeah, which is exactly what you want. You know, you, you want to have that kind of level of trust and kind of professionalism, and I couldn't fault them at all. They've never kind of once let me down. Anytime I've ever had a question, it's always been answered, uh, which is brilliant, you know, especially for someone like me who still kind of learning the ropes in a lot of ways. Um, they're yes. absolutely fantastic crowd. Can't, yes. uh, can't speak that's, more really about them. That's a huge blessing because I started yeah. with a publisher and it was not like that. Oh, no. <laughs> so, oh. <laughs> But it's all good now. I, I got my rights back and, <laughs> and just moved on. But um, part of me wants to talk a minute about the Insecure Writer Support Group. Yeah, because absolutely. Because I don't think we've talked about that on the podcast yet. And I used to do it all the time. And then I stopped blogging. Uh, why don't you tell <laughs> us what you love about it and how it's helped you as a writer? So uh, to be honest, it's, it's how opening and welcome, uh, welcoming, uh, well, sorry, I can't even pronounce, welcoming they are. Um, they're really kind of nice uh, group of people. Um, I think it's the kind of community that they've built um, and how they kind of like interact with each other. They're always willing to kind of support each other, pick each other up. There's some fantastic kind of articles that they do uh, on a weekly basis um, full of kind of practical tips for kind of writers of all levels. Um, yes. They're really fantastic about engagement. They really kind of want people to interact with them and to you know, be interacted with. Um, and uh, to be honest, they're just a, a great bunch of people. Like you, you see so many kind of horror stories on Twitter about the, the writing community and you can see some negative kind of backlash type of scenarios but it's great to kind of see the opposite of that like just a bunch of writers who will just do anything to kind of support each other and kind of build each other up um, and in a lot of ways I have to say they, they inspired me to actually go on go on and build my own community which is uh, the British and Irish writing community which is um, focused mainly on kind of writers in Ireland and the UK um, and we kind of model ourselves a little bit on the Insecure Writer Support Group but we came together kind of started building each other up and we launched our magazine uh, Bard of the Isles about a year ago so oh, uh, yeah I, they're a fantastic group Excellent. I really can't rate them highly enough. I'm glad you brought that up because I actually had that on my list of questions okay, so, cool. so that's excellent how did you get that started I mean was it hard did you find writers pretty quickly that were ready to jump in and, and be part of that community? 
Yeah, I mean, to, to be honest, it was very random how it started. Um, like, to be honest, I, I understand that social media, it's it's an important part of, like, writers, uh, of, of what we need to do. We need to get our word out there. And the only way we can do that is through kind of social media. Now, one of the things that um, I've kind of said before, and I will say uh, again, is when it comes to Twitter, there is certain kind of toxic elements there. And it's very hard to kind of connect with, with people in a, in a you know, a, an open and transparent way. So um, one day I was just randomly kind of scrolling through Twitter and I saw uh, a we from a, a British writer called Phil Parker, a fantastic uh, person as well, I have to say. Um, but he, he stuck with a tweet and it was something um, specifically, he was like, we should have a community that, you know, specifically kind of talks about Irish and kind of British writers and what we do and how our kind of work is unique. I saw this and straight away just emailed and was like, that is a brilliant idea. Sign me up. <laughs> Like, what can we do? Can we actually make this happen? But um, just two random individuals uh, on the internet just emailing back and forth over about two days. And in the end, we're like, yeah, let's do this. So we gathered all the writers that we knew and um, reached out to as many people as we could and started building this community. Uh, and it's it's been a fantastic experience. Um, I, I really just, it's better than I ever thought it would be. You know, just knowing that, like, people I haven't even met in different countries and all that are, like, um, fantastic friends, you know, I can reach out to them for kind of support or for, or for advice. Uh, it's, it's been a roller coaster. <laughs> it really I, has. I love it. I love it because that for me, when I started writing, I mean, this was forever ago and the blogging community, yep. let's see, I can't talk today either. The blogging community <laughs> is really what helped me keep going and finish that first novel Brilliant. because like you said, wonderful support. That's how I learned all these different things about writing, um, I, I'm so excited that you have that now. Yeah. Uh, something a little closer to home. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, um, and we've even kind of met up at a, a few conventions. So last year I went over to Bristol, kind of over in Bristol in the UK. Um, and again, just a bunch of people who've never kind of stood in the same room together, just got together. And we, we hit it off like we're long lost friends. It was just yes. a great experience. <laughs> really, really loved it, you know? It is. It is the best feeling. I don't think people who don't write and haven't been with other writers, <laughs> yeah. they, they just don't understand. They can't it's true. Understand. It's true. Only, only writers can understand the madness, you know? <laughs> It is so true. Okay, so let's back up a little bit and tell me how or what happened in your life that you first decided I'm going to write a novel. Um, again, it was it was very kind of random. Uh, like I, I have two young children, like they're six and five now. Um, but after they were born, my significantly better half, Anita, uh, she had a fantastic job. She was a HR manager for a big company and she absolutely loved it. So um, after our, our eldest uh, daughter was born, we kind of had that, that kind of sit down conversation like, okay, well, what are we going to do? Um, will I go to, will I continue kind of working full time? Um, will she continue working full time? And we kind of, it all came down to the, the maths basically. Um, she was in a fantastic job. Um, she was kind of very kind of career orientated and, uh, it, at the end of the day, it just kind of made sense from a financial point of view. Um, I, I certainly didn't want to be working full time as well as her and then uh, complete strangers raising our children, you know, right. or paying out like X amount of money to, to kind of look after them. So I just said, look, I'll go part time. I look after the kids. Everything will be grand. She gets to go on, kind of uh, focus on her career and then come back knowing that the kids are being looked after by myself. Yeah. So uh, I was doing that for, for a couple of years, uh, working part time. But as a, a kind of side kind of project, I um, started getting into app development. So um I reached out uh, to a few different American-based companies, ended up getting three contracts uh, to, to build um, wow. apps. So I was like really kind of mind blown. I was like, wow, this is really kind of working out for me, you know? Uh, in a very short space of time, everything just went south. I mean, I might as well have what, taken what little cash I had, gotten a lighter and just set it on fire and just thrown it at the back. <laughs> It was it was horrendous, and you know I had this kind of like moment. Um, I think it's like the long night of the soul or the dark night of the soul. You know, when you're kind of sitting there and you're reflecting, and you're kind of like, what should I do? Should I keep going with the the app thing? Uh, should I just keep taking out cash and kind of setting it on fire? Or should I try something different? And I don't know how or why, but my mind kind of went back to this thing I taught about about two years ago, where I'd been kind of mapping out my life, uh, and I, I remember vivid as day, I kind of said by about the two year uh, marker into the app development side of things, I wanted to be earning enough money that I could kind of maybe wind down a couple of hours or bring a couple of people else on, on board, specifically so I could write a book, and that was it. I just wanted to write, and I just remember it was like a thunderbolt kind of struck, and it was like, okay, why should I be waiting, you know, to, to build up my business to write a book when I could just cut it the middleman and just write a book? Yeah. And I know it sounds kind of obvious, but it's real kind of like clouds kind of parted, like sunlight shining down. Uh, and basically from there, from that point on, I just, I started writing. It had been the first time in years, I think in the space of 
three months because uh, I distinctly remember it was like two hours to go on New Year's uh, Eve. Uh, I'd finished the first draft of one of my first books, which is about 100,000 words long. And I just oh haven't goodness. looked back since then. So <laughs> That's it's, it's excellent. Weird. Yeah. Well, and obviously it comes naturally to you because I'm reading Big Red right now and I'm probably somewhere between 10 and 12 chapters in. And it's a great read to know that you wrote it that fast kind of almost hurts because I'm so slow. <laughs> but oh, in, no, in all fairness, in all fairness, like um, the, the, the kind of drafts that I did, it's changed kind of drastically from uh, what I originally submitted compared to like my, my publisher kind of polishing it off, you know? Yeah. So, um, I mean, I'd be lost if I didn't have the support <laughs> of my, my publisher and the editing team there, you know? Um, oh, that's why I, I cringe. I actually made the mistake of looking back at like one of the earlier drafts there a few months ago and it's just like, it's hot. No, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> just terrible. <laughs> But, uh, oh yeah. my goodness oh my goodness well let's talk about the book a little bit i have lots of okay. other questions but uh one of the things that has really impressed me with the book i guess online they kind of title it a time travel colonization a little bit military sci-fi yep. the way you handle the time travel aspect i think is actually brilliant because a lot of oh, times cheers. it's it's hard, a lot of times for a reader, you get lost in the, wait, yeah. where are we in this timeline that's going back and forth? I have not been lost once. Brilliant, thank you. In these chapters, so very well done. Um, where did this idea come from for Big it, Red? It, it was a nightmare. Uh, <laughs> honestly, it was, it, was, it was a nightmare. I distinctly remember it. Uh, I woke up the next day and just had these mad kind of like vivid kind of dreams uh, like I'm, I'm the type of person who, who I can normally remember my dreams but remember I just had this very strange nightmare um, and it which roughly kind of translates uh, into the first two chapters of Big Red but it, like still to this day I can, I can see it where I was kind of like I was walking through it kind of looked like an old abandoned school and there was all these kind of cots uh, you know kind of fold out beds and these soldiers are kind of lying on them and they're all kind of screaming and they're really kind of upset you know um, and I just remember kind of walking through this and I, like as soon as I woke up the next day I was like why were they screaming what was going on and I started thinking about it and the more I kind of started thinking about it the more this kind of story started to form uh, and I remember just uh, rolling it around my head for a couple of weeks until I, I had it and I just went straight into it from there so nightmare I'm monetizing my nightmares <laughs> awesome that's what I do with my first novel too <laughs> <laughs> yeah it has to be done <laughs> but, the, but the great thing is I love um people who don't write science fiction may not understand that it really is all about the questions and yeah, digging absolutely. in and finding the answers to those questions. Yeah. And that's what I love about it. You know, oh, yeah. the, the questions that you come up with. Yeah, um, exactly. You know, and that, that helps build kind of entertaining stories. And when you're kind of questioning yourself and you, you'd, you'd be surprised of where it can lead to, you know, and um, like, I, 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 although I had a very kind of rough over or outline of Big Red, uh, I'm what, what you call like a, a pantser as opposed to a plotter. So I just kind of go with it. Yes. So uh, I just remember a few times when it was just kind of pouring. I was like, well, where did that come from? You know, it's so <laughs> random. <laughs> and you're like, yes. Yes, well, score. <laughs> and, and I have to imagine a lot of your personal history really helped you bring this novel to life because um, I heard in a previous interview you did that you did serve in the Irish, I'm going to yep. say it wrong. So, <laughs> no. Why did you fill in my blanks there? <laughs> so uh, it was the, the Reserve uh, Defense Forces, um, which are kind of like the, the second line uh, of defense. So I think it's in America is the National Guard. Um, yes. And I think over in uh, the UK, it's the Territorial Army. So it was um, kind of just like a part-time thing. Um, we had to go down to barracks uh, about twice a week. Uh, you go off for weekends um, kind of to the firing range uh, or to do tactical, tactical exercises. And then you go off a couple of weeks during the summer and the winter with them. So it was to be honest, it ranks as one of the best decisions I ever made. Um, I actually, along with I suppose people of my generation, um, a lot of us kind of uh, lied about our age uh, to sneak into the, the army. So, <laughs> <laughs> and to be honest, it was Excellent. widespread. It was just one of those things um, where the army officially believes that I'm a year older. Um, yeah. But in all fairness, so like my officers were across it. I remember kind of. Uh, I think now it could get strong. I don't know if the um, legal age is 18 and I was 17, or the legal age was 17 and I was 16. I remember kind of like going into the barracks and my officer kind of asking uh, what my date of birth was and I gave it to him and he just looked at me and was like, try again. And so <laughs> I kind of gave him, gave him this and he goes, okay, well look, we need to get your parents' signature here. So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to leave the room and maybe your parents will walk in and sign that. So I'm like, okay, I don't know really what to do here. So I just kind of went with it and uh, it's a fantastic experience. It taught me so much kind of about 
I suppose about myself and about people, how to kind of work together as a group, how to like fulfill kind of missions or, you know, achieve objectives. Uh, and a lot of the skills that I learned there kind of were easily transferable to other aspects of my life, uh, you know, like getting into business or kind of like working and so forth. So, yeah, I love them. <clears throat> Sorry, I think it's the discipline. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and that's something that, you know, I do not have an experience with that. And uh, we were having a conversation, my husband and I, just yesterday about yeah. what kind of parents we were, because we were with some friends and they're very organized, very <laughs> disciplined the with their kids. And I'm like, yeah. oh, we were not like that. We were very, <laughs> yeah. my kids are great. They're independent, but, you know, we, we were not super disciplined. And um, I think the discipline is so important. And even as a writer, it helps you sit down and get the job done. Um, Absolutely. And I noticed in Big Red, <clears throat> as Darren or Dubs is telling his story, <laughs> when yeah. he wakes up and he's on Mars and he's like, they all just kind of accept it. And, and so I'm waiting to see how much of that is the drugs they were given, how much of it is just the discipline and the obedience just drilled into you from basic training that, okay, you just do it <laughs> yeah uh, to be honest i'd say it's a, a bit of everything there with that now uh, to be honest uh, like there's i don't want obviously don't want to kind of um give yeah, any don't spoilers, spoil but <laughs> exactly and um, there's there's a lot more going on to it uh, than kind of meets the eye so i've actually had people uh, come back to me say they have to read it two or three times just to kind of pick up on the little nuggets that I placed the whole way through. Um, like one of the things uh, I'm currently working on and it's due out next year is Blood Red Sand, which is the next novel in the series. So it's not a direct sequel, but it kind of answers a lot of the historical questions oh, um, that are kind of asked in Big Red. Um, I think uh, the main character, Dub, at one point, um, when he first kind of gets to Mars, they're brought into this like uh, this big hallway kind of thing and the, um, the officer, Mad Jack, he's kind of explaining the history um, and he makes a reference to the 1954 Battle of New Berlin. And that was one thing like readers came back to me after. I was like, wow, that sounds so fascinating. Like the Allies went into Mars and they took down the, the, the Nazis in 1954. Like, are you going to write about that? Uh, and my publisher actually kind of reached out to me there um, about a year ago and said, look, do you ever think about doing maybe a, a prequel short story? We'll give it away on Amazon just to young and dice kind of readers. And I said, yeah, yeah that's no problem. Uh, wrote about 11,000 words, sent it on to her. Uh, she came back to me then uh, a couple of days later. She's like, right, that was brilliant. Can, when can I have that as a novel? I was yeah. like, what, what, uh, sorry, no, we, you're looking for a short story. I'm, this isn't a novel. And she's like, no, this needs to be a novel. Write it now. And I was like, okay, you're the boss, no problem. So, uh, yeah, there'll be a lot more kind of uh, nuggets in that book now as well, which should kind of answer a few questions in big red as well. Oh, that's excellent. That is so excellent. Yeah. My mind was just following you along. And uh, what a blessing, though, to have a team that can encourage you and say, yes, this is what we want, and we want yeah. more of it. <laughs> yeah, it's really great. Um, I mean, like I said, I'm such a newbie that it's great having someone there to kind of encourage and kind of say, well, this works and that doesn't work. Or, and I, like I said, just randomly saying, turn this into a novel. I, that's all. Just work on that. We'll forget about the short story. It. And it was just like, wow, okay, it. totally cool. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm very lucky. Okay. Um, so... Since you're so new at this, it's, it, it feels like things are coming very easily for you in the sitting down and writing. And I know that's probably not true. What has been the biggest challenge of writing so far for you? Um, I'd, it's, I'd say nowadays it's more kind of time than anything because um, it's, it's very kind of tricky in terms of the lockdown um, and kind of like everything just being so up in the air. Now I'm kind of, I'm, I'm very lucky in the sense that I can work from home so I haven't really been impacted in that kind of way uh, and I mean it's an additional blessing getting to spend so much time with my family as well um, but at the same time, uh, especially in the height of the lockdown when there was very little we could do, um, it's trying to get into the mindset of actually writing you know I was so used to say my two children would go to school and I get the bulk of the writing done then you know and um, right. which I had a couple hours of just peace and quiet nice quiet home just type away a couple of thousand words but then obviously with the schools closed uh, and a lot of kind of leisure facilities closed like the kids are in the house or you know I have to look after them out the back or we're going for walks and so forth so it was very difficult trying to kind of balance it a little bit but to be honest I think it's I'm um, starting to uh, get my productivity um, up a lot higher nowadays. I think once I kind of needed to establish like a pattern of how I'm going to do it and what the most effective way was. Um, but I'd say that would probably be the biggest challenge, I should say, overall. Yeah, I think a lot of writers have probably struggled with that this year because you yeah. do, you get used to your system and yeah, exactly, yeah. kind of threw that all away. <laughs> I know. I mean, and my kids, my youngest is 14. 
So cool. they do okay. not need me. Yeah. <laughs> and they would sleep until, you know, 12 o'clock, one o'clock, and then get up and do their schoolwork. But yep. my brain was like, the kids are home. You cannot write. Gotcha. And, yeah. And, and that's just, that was a mindset I had to change. So I think a lot of writers have struggled with what's the new process of. Exactly. Yeah. We just have to adapt. That's 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 what it is, you know. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of us are kind of getting into the swing of it now a little bit. Um, but yeah, just there was a couple of days when it was just like, no, I just couldn't, <laughs> you know, no, not, not happening. Have Kids are today. screaming, forget about it. <laughs> yeah. uh, earlier, you mentioned that you went back and read one of those early drafts of your first yeah. novel. Uh, so that kind of ties into this question: Have you ever really, really hated something that you wrote? Yes, I call it my first draft on every <laughs> single novel I've ever done. Absolutely hating it. If I had hair, I'd be pulling it out kind of thing, you know. Um, the, the way I kind of like to do things is I believe in just kind of pouring the words out in the first draft. Like, don't even read it. Don't look at it. Don't edit. Don't fix it. It's just getting the entire story out there and then chipping away at it in, in kind of later drafts. So, yeah, I, I hate that. Like, as soon as I finish the first draft and then going back to read and kind of edit and fix it up, it's just like, no, it's like, this is terrible. <laughs> No one's ever going to like this. <laughs> but you just have to get on with it. It's just one of those things, you know? Yeah. So listeners, he just described NaNoWriMo, okay? November yeah. 1st. I'm not sure when this is going to go live, but we're recording before no November 1st, and I know a lot of us are going to do it. So Oh, yeah. That's, that's how we're going to get out some words this, this coming Yeah, month. just pour. Just let it pour out. Don't read it. Just keep going. Yeah. Keep pushing. Um, okay. What has been the toughest criticism you've ever received? That's a, yeah, that's a very good question. Toughest criticism. I'd say, um, see, I don't really kind of think of criticism as necessarily a, like a negative thing. I, I kind of like to look at it as more kind of constructive feedback. So right. even if someone doesn't like something, I try and kind of see the positive in it or kind of look for the lesson that I, I could be learning. Um, probably like uh, I've gotten a few comments off my, my editor um, just a bit kind of question and query and certain things in, in my latest novel um, now that's one thing I always say is the mark of a fantastic editor is someone who kind of pushes you and challenges you and kind of gives you a different kind of viewpoint or a different opinion on something right. um, and one of the things she, she kind of queried was um, the book itself is set in 1954 and um, it kind of deals with a lot of kind of, I suppose, tough content because you're you're kind of dealing with the 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 Nazis, um, who kind of run Mars. Um, there's a lot of kind of like uh, inherent kind of racism as well in that 1950s kind of British society. So there's one or two kind of times when some secondary characters made some kind of off the cuff comments about uh, the main or one of the characters who was Irish, and as you know, I'm Irish, so um, he made kind of like an anti-Irish slur. Um, now, the way I kind of look at it is like I'm an Irish writer. I'm kind of writing about something in the, the 50s. And it was there was kind of like times when there could be kind of a commentary like that made against Irish people. Uh, and she didn't like that at all. And we kind of ch chatted out a little bit. And I said, look, I could understand if it was X, Y, and Z, but this is like me, an Irish person, making an, an anti-Irish kind of comment. And I'm, I'm okay right. with that. I'm absolutely fine because it's complimenting the story, you know. And but, it was real. Oh, yeah, absolutely. From an authentic I mean, place. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there was kind of like, I won't go into it here, but there was a lot of kind of like incidents uh, in certain aspects of society during that time frame when people would have, you know, used kind of colourful language um, about a lot of people, you know, not just the Irish kind of thing. So I kind of had to sit back and say, well, look, this is why I'm putting that in there. It's it's not kind of, um, I'm not just throwing it in for the sake of throwing it in. It's something that my, my parents and my grandparents would have experienced to certain degrees, you know. But uh, again, I really appreciated the fact that she gave me that, that insights and kind of opened my eyes to like the other kind of uh, side of things. So it was absolutely fantastic experience, you know. I love that you're, you're right now, you're being the best example of how to take criticism. <laughs> yeah. See it as constructive and to have that dialogue and say, because um, one of the things that we've mentioned to our listeners is you have to get to a place where you can take it in, but then you can also yeah. say, thank you for sharing your thoughts with me on that. But oh, yeah. for my story, this is what I need. And, and being able to, to take the comments and use it to be better, but not change your story to make everybody else happy. Exactly, exactly. That's, that's the way to do it. You know, it's yeah. something that I, I learned that lesson kind of a very long time ago was try and kind of understand 
other people's opinions by you know imagine yourself in their shoes and try and see the world how they try, try and see it and once you have that understanding it can kind of help you as a writer but also as a person so i was really kind of grateful for all the feedback i've gotten even if i didn't necessarily like it and um, i really kind of appreciate the editing team and everything that they've done for me and kind of challenging me to look at things from different points of view which just strengthens up the book and strengthens up the writing so yeah really exactly. grateful exactly exactly but in the end you have your own voice and that's what exactly. has to come through. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love it. Absolutely. So, so what is the best compliment you've received so far? Uh, probably being compared to Robert Heinlein. Um, oh, awesome. which was just really really cool like uh, and it wasn't even kind of one person was like yeah uh, like as soon as kind of big red came out uh, and i started getting kind of reviews and it was showing up in kind of blog posts but it, it always started off like the new robert heinlein or you know this is very robert heinlein-esque and it's like wow that's just mind-blowing like really really cool you know i really kind of appreciate that so yeah that's probably been the best uh, and i still keep seeing it every time from time to time when people kind of like new people do pick it up and kind of read it and it's just like every time it's like wow you know i wish <laughs> You need to take that and run with it. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, one of our favorite questions, if Hillary was here, she would ask it because it's okay. her favorite question. Um, but she's traveling today. Do you feel, and I think I already know the answer, okay. <laughs> but do you feel like writing is a blessing or a curse? Uh, oh, definitely a blessing. You know, I'm so kind of appreciative for having it as an outlet. Um, like I said, just, you know, being able to kind of write something that kind of people connect with and kind of, uh, and kind of, you know, get some joy out of it. You know, it's, it's really just a mind blowing experience. And I think as writers, we tend to kind of um, be very hard on ourselves. Uh, with that you know especially when someone's trying to praise you it's really kind of like oh oh no <laughs> like you're clearly lying that type of thing you know um but yeah it's it's just i suppose just being able to kind of pour my nightmares out of my mind onto the pages and have people really kind of like just soak it up and read it and want more basically so yeah it's probably one of the best gifts that I, i've received and um, i'm so kind of grateful for it and for the opportunities that it's it's opened up for me so yeah definitely blessing 100 wow. percent. i love it I love it. Um, okay, let me think. Um, yeah, no problem. So many Take good things. So I have lots of questions, but there's so many good things that, that you're saying that I love. Um, okay. So if you had to describe, and I'm sure non-writers have asked you this question. Okay. <laughs> most likely. How do you describe to them what it feels like when you're in the zone writing? um it's 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 joy it's just kind of bliss you know I, I it's kind of like everything kind of melts away that i'm just i'm so focused on the story and this world is just so vivid it's in my mind i can almost kind of reach out and touch it um i can i can you know detect the sense i can hear the sounds i can see the characters i can see the buildings i can see the action it's it's just it's an it's an amazing experience um i've i've like had a couple of writing sprints where um i just sat down and maybe with the intention of doing maybe a couple of hundred words maybe a thousand or, or two thousand words i just ended up doing about ten thousand in the space of a couple of hours just because it was so intent so kind of lost in this world that i didn't want to stop you know yeah. so it's it's absolutely fantastic experience I, I wish i could kind of get more kind of writing sprints like that um more <laughs> Often. We all do. <laughs> yeah, because I'd love it, you know. If you think if you, if you can manage 10,000 words in one sitting, that's like 10% of a book right there. So, um, yeah, yeah, I'm just waiting for the stars to align again for me. <laughs> <laughs> it is so funny because when you feel that, yes. it's just like you're just tapping into that creative energy of the universe or however, you know, people want to look at it. And it is. It, yeah. it's, I love the way you described it. And I think that's why I've hit the point where sometimes I'm just sitting down and like, today this is a job i need <laughs> to get one more chapter done and, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and and like you said you're always waiting to tap into that again and yeah. uh it's been a while for me because i love science fiction i write a mix of science fantasy but about two years ago three years ago i started writing romance because it makes me money <laughs> yeah well look that's what you want <laughs> And I thought, you know, let's make some money so I could pay for editors yeah. for my science fiction. Uh, and That's the way to do it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but it's, Fair play. Uh, it is. It's, it's, I kind of feel like I sold my soul out, though. 
Oh, I mean, as, as long as you're you're kind of happy with what you're doing. Uh, at the end of the day, like as writers, we, we can't feel guilty about getting paid. Um, and it's something that, I mean, each and every one of us would love to, you know, be millionaires, I'm sure, from our writing. But I mean, if it's one of those things that, you know, you're passionate about kind of writing romance and you're happy with it, like, go for it. Absolutely. I'd love to be able to do it, to be honest. Um, I'm, I'm just one of those, I'm, I'm really kind of into like action-y type of books and a load of blood and guts and explosions and stuff. So I'm just, I'm trying to find a way of like meld some sort of romance team into that a little bit. Right. Um, right. Yeah, I'd love to be able to do it, but no, not at this stage of my career, but I'm working on it. <laughs> well, it's funny because I told Hillary, Hillary and I are great friends. Uh, I wish she could have been here to meet you today, but we get together and write. And cool. um, I told her, I said, I'm done with romance. <laughs> I need to go blow up a planet yeah. <laughs> and, and my husband just looked at me like uh should I be worried I'm like no I will go kill people on paper and we will be good there we go yeah <laughs> so, so, so there are there are different things you get out of different genres writing it yeah. and reading it and I'm yeah. like I need a break from romance it's time to get some action and uh, yeah and you just have to mix so. it up every now and again <laughs> absolutely <laughs> okay so um what advice, we'll just kind of, basically, yeah, what do you want to talk about? What advice would you give writers? What is it you want readers to know about you? What's on your mind? Feel free yeah, to so, just talk. Yeah, by all means, one of my favorite <laughs> things to do. <laughs> Um, so in terms of advice, uh, I'd say don't be too hard on yourself. Um, I think there's a lot, of, especially in the, the, the online writing community, there's a lot of people follow kind of like um, you know, Stephen King, obviously because he's such a fantastic writer and he's so successful. I think one of his quotes is something like, if you can't do, if you, you can't do like four hours a day or you can't do like 4,000 words or something along those lines, it's, I suppose it's, it's kind of comparing yourself to how he does things, you know, which is fine if that's what you want to do. Absolutely go for it. But don't kind of hold yourself to this standard um, or to anyone else's standard except for your, for your own. So um, the way I kind of look at things is if you write 100 words, if you write 1,000 words, if you write 10,000 words, you're a writer. If you can actually take the time to do it. Uh, another thing is, like, don't be hard on yourself. Like, give yourself a day off. I mean, if something goes wrong, like, say, if you're, you're kind of launching a book and it doesn't do as successfully uh, as you anticipated, give yourself permission to, just, you know, feel bad. It's, it's okay. It's absolutely fine. Um, it's, it, like, writing, just like anything else in life, um, you just have to kind of go with it sometimes. You know, sometimes you, you get hit with a curveball. Sometimes something unexpected happens. It's just life. Just go with it. Yeah. Do the best thing that you can do. Be the best version of yourself that you can be as a person as a, like a part of your your family friends whatever citizen and um, member of the community just be your best self don't be too hard on yourself roll with it go for it, um, it. <laughs> you know. so i mean yeah that's that's what i'd say in terms of advice um if you're looking to to I suppose know something about me. I think we've touched on a little bit. Is um, I'm really kind of proud of the fact that I was a member of the Reserve Defence Forces, and it's something that I would encourage kind of people. Now, obviously, I know it varies in, from country to country the different kind of setups. Um, but I mean, especially to, to anyone out, out there who might be kind of listening in Ireland, um, would be to yeah, if you get the opportunity to to, to enlist, even if it's a member of the Reserve Force, it's an absolutely fantastic experience. Um, and there's a lot of kind of like uh, organisations out there that you know, if if the military thing isn't your type of thing, I think there's reserve kind of uh guardy which is our kind of police there's reserve kind of fire um fire men that's the word i'm looking for fire <laughs> fire prevention <laughs> i don't know what i'm trying to say but yeah there, there's a lot of funny community uh, organizations out there for for young people to, to go uh, join um, and you'd be surprised at the life lessons that you learn and the experiences you get to have uh, one of my favorite experiences ever was when i was in the reserves i, uh, I was a part of the the weapons support company so we got to get play with a load of like cool weapons and my favorite one ever was the 60 vector uh, 60 millimeter vector mortar um, and I'll, I'll, it'll always stay with me to my dying day watching the bomb drop into the mortar just seeing it looking up and seeing it disappear into the clouds and then way off there's this mountain and you just see the explosion a moment before you hear the sound and just seeing this all oh, these explosions up on top of this mountain you're like well i did that that's so cool <laughs> like and that's something no one can, can never kind of take away from me because it's just burned in here it's just wow oh, that's so cool yeah. so yeah <laughs> um yeah <laughs> that's, that is so much fun <laughs> oh, <what's... laughs> oh my goodness oh, damien it has been so fun having you and i'm glad that alex um shared our podcast with you because I really love having other authors and I want to have authors from all kinds of kinds of genres come on and talk, 
Good. because everybody's in a different place. And I think it's very encouraging and inspirational for them to hear someone say, this is how I did it. And everybody does it different. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, no, it's, it's been fantastic. And thank you very much for your time and for having me on. Um, like I said, hopefully we'll cross paths again in the future. If you're ever yes. looking for a guest, you know where to find me. I'm always quite happy to hop on and have a quick chat, you know. Yes. So thank you very much for it. I really do appreciate the opportunity. I have to say, I'm sitting down here in my son's room because uh, my husband's upstairs on calls. And I was like, okay. where's a quiet place I can do this? <laughs> and he's moved out. He's at college, so it's it's kind of bare bones. But above me on his bulkhead here, yeah. he has the license that we bought when we were in Dublin a couple of years ago. Oh, cool. And it's so funny because totally random. <laughs> yeah. And my pronunciation is going to be horrible because it's not okay. required but I started taking Gaelic on an app oh, and well I done. looked up and it says cute Mila Falcha <laughs> and I know what that means and I was like wow I haven't even been down in his room for two years to, to you know really look at it but I would have oh, had random. you on here no matter what you wrote simply to hear your accent so <laughs> oh, thank you <laughs> What, do, what does it sound like? Is it good? It's awesome. <laughs> oh, brilliant! Thank you. <laughs> so, like, I'm never really too sure how uh, how like I, I suppose I sound to other or to, to non Irish, you know, because uh, we wa obviously watch a lot of American kind of uh, TV kind of programs. Grew up on like you know, Saved by the Bell and all this, you know. <laughs> um, but you know, you'd see it from time to time, like uh, Americans kind of like having maybe an Irish character on, like say for the, the Simpsons, and it always just sounds so kind of like top of the bar, don't you, and all this type of thing. Like, and you're like, no, 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 we don't talk like that. <laughs> <laughs> that is good. The yeah. the accent test. That's brilliant. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh, that reminded me of one other thing. Yep. I'll, I'll move stuff around as I edit, but um, for military sci-fi, I yep. have really appreciated the language is clean. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I was like, because I love military sci-fi, but I don't often share it with my friends because a lot of times it's very real like my brother served 20 years in in the air force here well done. and Fair he's play. like oh yeah the language he's like <laughs> <laughs> i'm like okay yeah. um so i really appreciate that and i wondered is that a personal choice from you was that your publisher um, I'd say probably 98% of it was me there was like maybe 2% uh, from my publisher um because I remember in the original um, manuscript, uh, there was like two, I think there was two instances of the the F word. Um, and the publisher, publisher came back and just said, look, um, the way we kind of do things is, um, she just, what did she describe it to me? It was PG-13, I think yeah. is some rating over there. So I actually had to Google that because we, we'd have a different <laughs> film classification. I was like, okay, PG-13, what can I do? And I just had to look at it. And to be honest, like 98% of the manuscript did fit those guidelines, you know? And yeah. um, so it was just literally, I just made two slight changes, removed two words and replaced them with something else and that was it you know yeah. so um i think for me i think uh there's a time and a place to, to kind of have um language uh, in there you know in your in right. your works and if it complements it go for it you know if it doesn't don't and because i naturally don't really write like that anyway um as i said there was two instances i was like yeah that's no problem at all so I'm quite happy to remove them you know does it doesn't yeah. impact the story at all so uh yeah i suppose that's just me though you know i do tend to focus a lot on the violence as opposed to you know excessive language or kind of like serious adult themes just it's my way of writing i like doing what i like doing you know and i don't want to kind of just <laughs> i suppose touch on stuff just because it'll, it'll sell more you know so yeah right quite happy right. with well, and I love that you said that too, because that's a discussion my husband and I have had a lot because, you know, we don't yep. use swear words, but sometimes I'm like, this is a intense military situation. Yeah. And I know real military guys would be, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. it would be a different language here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, but, I, but I think, you know, like you said, there are, there's a time and a place where it would add authenticity and yeah that's so important in our writing and the thing is is I feel that though even without the language in your story uh, yeah. and and I think that's because of your experience and it's coming through and I'm really enjoying it so brilliant thank you um, much appreciated for that we'll make sure we have links for everybody <laughs> to to find you on Amazon uh have you ever considered I didn't look is it in audio yet uh, not yet. So I think it's something um, at some point, I, again, I'm not 100% sure how my publisher does it, but I think it has to 
tick X amount of boxes before we can kind of move into that direction. So yes. uh, I don't think I'm quite there yet, but uh, fingers crossed <laughs> down the line. Let's see what happens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know I know a lot of people really enjoy that. And uh, oh, yeah. that'll be exciting. Oh, yeah, well, absolutely. I guess um, I will let you get back to your afternoon, but I'm so grateful that you were willing to join us and, and be here. And I will make sure that... Uh, I send you links and stuff and if Please, you ever you. want to get in touch or if you have other friends that you're like hey let's all get together and let's let's do something just drop me an email and say, yeah absolutely yeah I mean I, I love this type of stuff like I'm always quite happy to kind of interact and talk with people so yeah. if you're ever kind of looking for us uh, for someone to have have on again yeah definitely 100% count me in I'll definitely awesome. spread the word with my colleagues in the British and Irish writing community anyway as well so um really appreciate your time thank you so much for for everything uh, and you have yourself a wonderful day. Thank you. You too. And thank you for giving us our small little podcast, uh, some excellent, excellent advice on, on writing and, and sharing your journey with us. We appreciate yeah, my it. My pleasure. <laughs> no, no problem at all. Anytime. <laughs> well, we like to sign off with uh, something that we hope is inspiring for others. And we hey. like to say, uh, keep writing or yeah. start writing. <laughs> Keep writing or start writing. I like it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. And I hope you have a wonderful day. And you too. Thank you. For it. <laughs> that was the best. I know. I, it was great. I like, oh, it's so funny. I like, I like it when I have questions and then when my brain just starts, wait, I want to ask this. And then I, I know. Yeah. So I, yeah. I, I like that I can edit and go, okay, let's cut out that stupid thing I said. <laughs> <laughs> I know sometimes uh, I wish I, I had an edit button myself for day to day interactions, you know, <laughs> just to be able right. to wish I could kind of take that back. <laughs> I know. I was actually sitting there thinking this is something else I don't think non writer people understand yep. is socially, I can be very awkward. Most of the time, I'm okay. But when yeah. you're in that zone and the story is talking to you, but you have yeah. to go do this and you have to go do this, <laughs> and people are like, I'm talking to you, and you're like, oh, I'm sorry, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> and I, know. I know I've said some very dumb would be a nice way to say it things. <laughs> I'm <laughs> not here been. on earth. I'm somewhere else. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's just uh, like a head stuck in the clouds, you know. And yeah. um, I remember one time, uh, one of my colleagues, and this is terrible. I don't, still to this day, I'm kind of like, it's real cringy. But one of my uh, work colleagues came in, uh, came into work and he looked really, really kind of upset. Um, so I was like straight away seeing a, a friend kind of like, you know, not looking 100%. I was like, are you okay? What happened to you? And he kind of looked at me and kind of had the, like these teary kind of eyes. <laughs> um, and he said, my, my grandmother passed away. And I don't know why, still to this day, I have no clue why I said it, but out of the blue, it just says, oh, uh, were you close? And you know, as soon as I said it, it was just like, oh my God, he just, he's looking at me. I'm looking at him and I'm like, oh, you have sorry. no idea what I meant by that. I'm so sorry. So yeah. It's like, yes, it's like my brain hadn't quite caught up with the yeah. present here and now. <laughs> exactly. Just, and just what just you off. actually said. Were, were you close? I, I mean, I could have like said anything like, I'm sorry to hear that, you know, or geez, are you okay? Just sit down. Do you want to talk? Were you yeah. close? <laughs> Oh. oh yeah <laughs> edit button for real life that's living yeah. the dream yes <laughs> well thank you damien no problem i really do appreciate it <laughs> <laughs> no problem okay i'll leave you to it but uh thank you very right. much for your time and you have yourself a wonderful day right i will and when i um put it live i will send you a yep. link to it so you know it's up Perfect. um because i'm doing a couple of interviews and basically i'm saving them because it gets so crazy busy during november and december oh, yeah. that okay. we can't often meet to make a recording so that way I can uh but it'll come out in November for sure so that's great yeah look whenever suits you um I'm okay. looking forward to it but yeah I'll, I'll share that around to everybody anyway so awesome yeah, really looking forward to it awesome well have a great day <laughs> you too thank you all the all best right. bye <laughs> okay see you then bye bye bye